This year has been an exciting but challenging year for a lot of uh, alternative and active strategies. It's been quite uh, an equity-led rally from the concentrated in large cap tech and AI-related firms and most other hedge fund strategies and just other, a lot of other strategies even outside of hedge funds have just uh, struggled and hasn't been anywhere as exciting. We entered this year with a, everyone was uh, quite had a bearish tilt waiting for the long awaited recession never happened. Uh, right away came, you know, the whole love of uh, AI and uh, people were very excited of where we stood on AI adoption, hence the rally in tech. Um, but then came, you know, the whole period of rates uh, and the worry of being higher for longer then that took out a bunch of regional banks in March, and it kind of came out of nowhere, kind of surprised the market with a lot of, uh, of what happened, took out a number of banks, and the swift and very surgical policy response that followed. Um, you had this continuous um, uh, a bit of a hawkish Fed still, but that didn't uh, turn away you know, the, the rally in tech. Now we've kind of come to where we are, we think, the end of the hiking cycle, uh, there still are going to be lingering worries about rates being higher for longer. How much can this tech rally continue? Next year is an election year. There's heightened risks of geopolitical uncertainty. Um, so th there's a lot going on. Uh, so there's a, a, people could think a lot of uh, what happened this year could continue. But then, you know, caution is warranted when you look at uh, in history of all hiking cycles. Eventually, uh, hiking cycles uh, do get reversed. Um, and you look at every hiking cycle that's happened to date that often led to quite a big slowdown. And uh, what makes this hiking cycle especially interesting was the speed and veracity, how we've, the real rates have just gone from negative 2% to plus 2% so quickly. And uh, it's, already gonna, it's already baked in the cake for what it's going to be doing for slowing down uh, the economy. So there's a lot to be said about how this potentially can be unwound, you know, coming up in the next year or two, et cetera. So we'd love to hear today from uh, perspectives from various uh, allocators uh, with different uh, expertise and different asset classes and focus. And uh, why don't we start with uh, John, that uh, you have uh, a, quite a broad mandate looking at uh, various asset classes and things. What are, excites you today about uh, these markets? What are you leaning into these days? So I think, you know, 50-50 is the new 60-40. I think um, generational opportunities and fixed income for the first time. I think, irrespective of last week's very significant rally in the bond market, I think there, there are still excellent opportunities in the core fixed income market. So I think that's sort of job number one right now. We, we think the market's about 10% expensive. I mean, I suppose you get there at 4365 on 220 is 20 times earnings, 4365 on $250 next year is 18 times earnings. So we probably think fair value is around 4000 on the equity market, so I think we're fairly neutral to, to negatively bias on the equity markets. I think in alternatives, I think certainly, um, you know, the Alt Energy Renewable build out, it's $100 trillion gonna get spent. And I think in the commodity markets, I think you gotta look very deeply right now, and I think we're doing that. Um, the head of the tribe is calling. And um, so I think, you know, for those of us that allocate capital for a living, uh, certainly commodities have always been a conundrum. I think right now they're especially interesting because the ESG crowd really doesn't like, you know, the material side. So I think as that as that piece gets figured out, particularly in terms of base base metals, other raw materials, you know, energy, pure energy aside, I think excellent opportunities in the next ten years. That's a quick summary for. Great, uh, Scott. How about yourself? Um, so I'd maybe separate just, I think we're supposed to talk a little bit about alpha and a little bit about markets. Um, you know, on the alpha side, I think one of the things we spend a lot of time thinking about is the size of different opportunity sets versus the amount of capital that is chasing them. Um, and also the potential return and, and return per given unit of risk. And you can define that risk you know, with respect to credit spreads or interest rate duration or private equity multiples or, or PE multiples in public markets. Um, so, you know, I think we start, if we're thinking about alpha at the very top and, and try to look at those things. I'd say with respect to markets, uh, from our perspective, we've been in the higher rates camp for a couple of years and have done a few things that, uh, that perform very well uh, over the last couple of years to, to get ready for this. You know, I, I think 
from where we are now, uh, one, I'd say higher rates is a great thing from uh, an allocator perspective in designing portfolios. You can do things that have been more challenging in the zero interest rate environment. Uh, you can do those now. They can generate stable returns. They can do what fixed income or credit more broadly is trying to do. I'd say, you know, the comment about 50-50 being the new 60-40, I think most portfolios were more like 70-30 or 80-20 going back a couple of years. Um, and now for a number of portfolios, um, you know, we have more than 50% in contractual returns and not just traditional fixed income markets, but things that take advantage of higher rates uh, and our position for the environment that we're living in now.